Hey, Mr. Johnston here. And in this video, we're going to walk through some vocabulary you have already learned, but we're going to re talk about it as a review. You're going to use this video and the information on these slides I'm about to share to fill out your uh, sheets where you can have a written copy reviewing these key vocabulary terms for the ecology unit. This will be graded before you leave class today, and it will be very helpful for you in our activities later this week. So with that being said, let's get started. First, we have ecology. Ecology is the study of relations of organisms to one another and to their physical environment. In other words, how do living and non-living things interact? Interdependence. The survival of species is dependent on other living organisms and non-living components. This is connected to ecology. It's just a word explaining that everything is connected. The living things, the non-living things, there are complex relationships between all of them. An ecosystem. Now we're talking about levels of organization. We've learned this, so hopefully this is familiar. It's been a while since we've talked about it. An ecosystem is all of the living and non-living parts of a particular place. So this includes plants, animals, bacteria, water, wind, dirt, sand, all of it. And as we saw in interdependence, all of those things are connected. Ecosystem is living and non-living. A community is one level more specific. A community is the interacting organisms in an area. This is only the living things. So we're talking about animals and plants and bacteria here. A community does not include water. It does not include rocks or dirt or air. More specific than a community is a population. This is all the organisms in one type of species in a specific area. So here, it's just living things of the same species, like a population of giraffes. Or in our classroom, we could have a population of human beings all of us being the same species in the same place. Even more specific than a population is an organism. An organism is a single individual living thing, like this red panda. Here we have one of my favorite images because it's pretty simple, pretty clear, the different levels of organization we just talked about. An organism here is the most specific smallest group. A population would be multiple organisms of the same species. A community is multiple populations in the same area. So now we're talking about groups of zebras, groups of trees, groups of vultures, right? All different populations in the same place. And an ecosystem, again, is all of the living and non-living parts of an area. So this is water, this is plants, this is dirt, this is trees, okay? Even larger than an ecosystem is the biosphere. The biosphere is all of the ecosystems on planet Earth. In other words, all of the places where there are living and non-living things together, that makes up the biosphere. It goes from the deepest parts of the ocean where there are living and non-living things to the tallest, highest points of the atmosphere where there are living and non-living things. As soon as you are so high up, there are no longer organisms living in the atmosphere. Think really, really tiny bacteria. You have left the biosphere because if we don't have living things, we don't have an ecosystem. So organism to biosphere, these are the levels of organization. Now, we're going to continue and start talking about some relationships between organisms, uh, connections between living things. Here we have predator, an organism that consumes or eats another organism for food. Now I've circled the predator here, this bear, but hopefully you could figure that out without the giant red circle. Prey is the exact opposite of the predator. It's the organism that is consumed or eaten by another thing for food. I put a giant red circle around the fish, but hopefully you understand that that's the fish with or without the red circle. Next in bold, instead of underlined, we have relations or connections between organisms. Predation is the relationship 
in which one organism, the predator, benefits by eating another, the prey. Now, predation is the relationship or the connection between two living things. The predator is the single organism that eats other things, okay? Predation is the relationship, predator is the organism. Hopefully you can tell which is predator and which is prey in this image here. Now we have types of living things. A carnivore is an organism that mainly eats other animals for its food, like this chameleon or this lion. An herbivore is the opposite. It's an organism that mainly eats plants or parts of plants for its food, like this koala or these very, very beautiful cows. An omnivore is like many human beings and some other organisms too, an organism that eats both plants and animals in similar amounts. A question for you to think about, are all humans omnivores? Can humans be herbivores or carnivores? Something to consider. Next, we are in bold, so we're talking about another relationship, mutualism. Mutualism is the relationship between two species or two organisms where there is a benefit or something good for both of them. Here we have some examples. A turtle and the fish. The turtle has its shell cleaned by the fish. So that's good for the turtle. And the fish have something to eat. This algae is like food for them. It's not like, it is food for them. So both organisms have a benefit. Here are the hummingbird and the flower. The hummingbird gets nectar for food and the flower gets pollen shared from it to other flowers, which is gonna in turn cause new plants to grow. Both organisms receive a benefit in mutualism. You can remember mutualism because it's mutually beneficial or both organisms benefit. Next is commensalism a relationship between sp two species in which one species benefits or has something good and the other is unaffected. The other doesn't care. First, we have a horse with some birds. The horse is a pretty large animal. And most of the time when there's a really large animal, not many things are gonna mess with it. So because of that, the birds can actually take advantage. The birds can have a safe place to eat insects without worrying about another organism coming to eat the birds for dinner. Here we have a whale with barnacles. Barnacles are these little guys right here that are attached to the whale. Now, barnacles can't move in the same way that a whale can or that you and I can. Barnacles are attached to something or another, this something could be another organism. The way that barnacles get their nutrients or the way they get their food is by water moving over and through them. So since they can't move, they need to rely on some other things, in this case, a whale. As the whale is swimming through the ocean, that's causing water to move around and through the barnacles. So the barnacles get the nutrients they need and the whale doesn't care. The whale has more important things to worry about than barnacles getting nutrients on its back. Finally, our last relationship, we have parasitism a relationship in which one species benefits or has something good, while the other is harmed, has a negative impact. An important thing to note is that the organism that benefits is the parasite. The organism that's harmed is called the host. Here we have a tapeworm, the parasite, in the intestines, that's in your gut, of another organism, the host. What's happening is the tapeworm is actually stealing nutrients taking away what the host needs so the tapeworm can survive. So the tapeworm gets benefits, the host gets harmed. The, but we should remember the tapeworm does not want the host to die because if that happens, the tapeworm no longer is receiving nutrients. Another example is a tick on one of your pets. If a pet or a cat or a dog, for example, has a tick, the tick is stealing nutrients from the cat or dog by sucking the blood out. This is not so great for the cat in this example, but it's great news for the tick. Similar to the tapeworm and similar to all other parasites, the tick does not want the host to die because if that happens, the parasite then needs to find a new place, a new host, or the parasite is gonna die along with the host. To review, Mutualism is a relationship where two organisms benefit. They both get something good. Commensalism is a relationship where one organism benefits and the other organism eh, doesn't care. 
It's unaffected. And finally, parasitism is a relationship where one organism benefits and the other is harmed, but not always killed. Use the information in this video to fill out your review worksheet. When you have finished re your review worksheet, raise your hand and get my attention. That way I can mark a grade for you. Nice job. And of course, if you have questions, raise your hand and let me know. Otherwise, that's it.